Hey guys, episode number four of the CryptoZombie.io learning course with me, Wimi, and we're going to take a look at chapter seven today. Chapter seven is function declarations. A function declaration in Solidity looks like the following. Function, eat hamburgers, brackets, string memory, name, uint amount, public. So from the last time we learned that the uh, visibility is public so that other contracts can interact with this, if I remember right. So let's check what they say here. This is a function named eat hamburgers. Yeah, we got that right. That takes two parameters, a string and a uint. For now, the body of the function is empty. Note that we're specifying the function visibility as public as I just said, we're also providing instructions about where the name variable should be stored in memory. This is required for all reference types such as arrays, structs, mappings and strings. What is a reference type you ask? Well, there are two ways in which you can pass an argument to a solidity function. By value, which means that Solidity compiler creates a new copy of the parameters value and passes it to your function. This allows your function to modify the value without worrying that the value of the initial parameter gets changed. Or by reference, which means that your function is called with a reference to the original variable. Thus, if your function changes the value of the variable it receives, the value of the original variable gets changed. Note, it's convention but not required to start function parameter variables with an underscore in order to differentiate them from global variables. We'll use that convention throughout our tutorial. You would call this function like so. Eat hamburgers, Vitalik 100. So let me just get an overview of this. Basically, in this example, they are using the eat hamburgers function and the name of the string would be Vitalik and the amount of the string would be 100. So Vitalik would be eating 100 hamburgers, <laughs> GG to that. And now we have to put it to the test. In our app, we're going to need to be able to create some zombies. Let's create a function for that. Create a public function named create zombie. It should take two parameters, underscore name as a string and underscore DNA as a uint. Don't forget to pass the first argument by value by using the memory keyword. Leave the body empty for now. We'll fill in. We'll fill it in later. All right, this is where things are starting to get a bit complicated. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit so I can read everything that is said here on the left right on the left side. So this was all done before. This was fairly easy to the point and the function declarations are a mess right now, right? <laughs> I'm not getting it yet, so I might have to think about it later on. But let's start with the put it to the test exercise they are wanting us to do. So they are wanting us to do create a public function named create zombie. Uh, we would just go ahead and type in function create zombie. And the declaration of the public string or the public visibility would be after the brackets. So I'm just going to type in public here and uh, just add the swung brackets for now and here we got to fill in the normal brackets right so we have uh, we should do two parameters in here one which is underscore name as a string and given this example I would type string underscore name comma and the next one will be in uint underscore dna uint 
underscore DNA. Don't forget to pass the first argument by value by using the memory keyword. So the memory keyword was explained uh, here that the value is yeah, basically passed on to the next function. Um, and the memory word in the example is standing right in the middle, like string, memory, and then name. So I think that we have to do the same for this. And this should be the function that we're working with, or this should be the correct one if I, if I don't get anything wrong here. And inside the, the swung brackets, like these, uh, this is basically the body and they're saying leave the body empty for now we'll fill in that later so we basically have a skeleton here right for the function create zombie the string memory name you in dna and the declaration as a visibility to public let's check our answer and victory you have triumphed solidity cowers in front of your might lesson unlocked Given the time, I think we can add another one if it's not too much text. So it looks basically the same like the the one we did before. A little, little more text maybe. I think we're just going to add this in so we have a little more to view in this part. Chapter 8, working with structs and arrays. Creating new structs. Remember our person struct in the previous example? struct person u and h string name person public people now we're going to learn how to create new persons why is this s not purple <laughs> and add them to our people array so this is a comment again create a new person person satoshi equals person h 172 name satoshi Add that person to the array people.push satoshi. All right, so we're pushing something here, uh, something that we call satoshi here, person satoshi equals person 172 and name satoshi. We can also combine these together and do them in one line of code to keep things clean. People push person. 16 Vitalik. Note that array push adds something to the end of the array, so the elements are in the order we added them. See the following example. Uh, we're setting a new int with numbers. Numbers push 5, numbers push 10, numbers push 15. So this would be a cleaner one. I think this would also work with this Satoshi one here. So it would be people.push bracket satoshi 172 name satoshi right i hope this makes sense i'm not 100 sure if this one is the uh, name that we are giving but let's see what happens put it to the test let's make our create zombie function to do something one, fill in the function body so it creates a new zombie and adds it to the zombies array. The name and DNA for the new zombie should come from the function arguments. Second, let's do it in one line of code to keep things clean. All right, so we're basically, we'll be looking at this example and then we are trying to uh, solve what they're giving us as an exercise right here and I'm just going to think about how we would build this into our contract. So this will take a few minutes and you will not be noticing it because I will be cutting it out. We might need to use the hints this time <laughs> because I'm not really sure how to start here. I mean, this is the people example, so they have these people push things. And if we just look at this, there was the person public people uh, declaration. So given our zombie one, I think that we 
uh, would have to start with zombies here. And then I think we have to do a push call. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure, right? So given the exercise below, I think that we need to use uh, the capital letter zombie somehow. And the addition to the zombies array should be done with this function. Like it pushes something to the zombie array, right? Um, so I would go and type in zombie here, but just given of, of this example, right? Because I don't have a clue uh, if this would really make sense. Like I'm doing this right now, but I'm just going to use the hint if we're uh, finished typing. And then we had have used the zombie and the zombies one. And then we are still in need to use name and DNA. I'm not too sure how to put them in context to this, right? I think that we, if we're just going to simple and put a basic like, like default mask in here, there should be something like the DNA digits, which is here. I'm not too sure where to put the name and DNA uh, handles to be honest. I, th I know that we got them here in the struct zombie one, like the string is for the name and the uint is for the DNA, uh, which we can see here in the person example. So they're referring to this one and obviously we have to refer to our struct zombie with it. Um, but given this example, it should be like DNA and then name but I'm, I'm not too sure if this makes any sense to be honest because we're not using something to name this actual thing here and by using this code they are basically putting these two th things into one line of code, right? So they kind of merging these two together. And this is the same as here. Then they are adding this one into the brackets. And in this example, they are doing the push thing, then adding a person via this struct person one and then putting in the age and the name. So we are not looking for age and name, we are looking for name and DNA, which would translate to name and DNA, I think. So this is clean now, um, but we're also looking for a uh, struct zombie so this should be this one, right? And for the public zombies, we're calling this with the push function. So we're pushing this one to the zombies array, hopefully. I'm using the hint right now because as I said, I'm not too sure. I'm not able to click the hints button. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. If I, What if I just cut it out here. I still can't use it, right? So if we can't use the hints, I'm just gonna go for it right now. Gotta be honest with you, I did not understand everything I was doing in this one because if it wasn't for the examples with the persons, person here, I wouldn't be able to put this together at all. And yeah, I just saw that we missed the semicolon here, right? Um, and given this, it should be right with the exercise that we got from the logical side here. So I'm just going to check the answer right here. So now it says that it's not right. We can't use hints. So let me think about it. 
let me think about what went wrong here. So I've just read the exercise text again and fill in the function body so it creates a new zombie. This is right and adds it to the zombies array. This is done here. Zombie is done here, but now it gets tricky. The name and DNA for the new zombie should come from the function arguments. This was the main point I was missing. Um, I think that the function arguments are the ones that are standing in these brackets, which means name and DNA should use an underscore in front of them because we are not referring to the struct zombie one, but to the uh, arguments giving in our function create zombie. And these are the ones with the underscore, like they said in the example before. I think this should be good now because we are now referring to the variables declared inside this function and not those that are publicly named DNA and name in the struct for the zombie. So let's try again and check if we're right this time. Yay, you have triumphed. So did the cow was in the front of a might. Lesson unlocked. This was a hard one, I got to admit. <laughs> you will see me struggling when the video comes online. So thank you for the attention and stay safe out there. Hope you had fun following this episode and be sure to check out the other videos if you haven't.